Hi, my name is Heather Gallagher from Warner Park Nature Center. Thank you for joining us to celebrate hummingbirds with Metro Parks of Nashville and Davidson County and Friends of Warner Parks. I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, Mike Berkeley from Grow Wild Nursery in Fairview, Tennessee. Hi, I'm Mike Berkeley, co-owner with Terry Barnes of Grow Wild Incorporated Native Plant Nursery here in Fairview, Tennessee. Uh, we are the largest native plant nursery in the whole Mid-South area. And we say that by the number of different species and cultivars of North American natives. Um, we have a huge trial garden here at the nursery so that we could try these plants out before the homeowner gets them so that we'll know exactly what their culture requires where they look the best, uh, are they pollinator plants, butterfly plants, hummingbirds like them, birds like them. We test all these plants. Um, and then we also have a permit with the state of Tennessee to grow and sell federally protected species like the Tennessee coneflower, which is our uh, flagship plant. You know, it's one of my favorite green root plants. Uh, the Echinacea tennessinensis was one of the first species put on the 1972 Endangered Species Act. Uh, and since then, it has uh, been so much protection put in on that that has been now delisted or downgraded on the federal list. So we grow several different types of, of species. Um, and we're constantly trying them out from all over the southeast and from the deep south. And some of the things that we're finding out is that some of the plants that 20 years ago did not do well here in Middle Tennessee from the Deep South are doing actually quite well now. So we're trying with that more species of plants. We're up to over a thousand different species and cultivars of North American natives. Uh, the other thing that we're really known for is uh, our design. Uh, our logo will tell you that we are doing natural designing with native plants. Natural designing is very different than what we've known uh, in suburbia gardening uh, for decades, is that it's not as much symmetrical uh, and uh, there's more flow to it, a little more relaxed, if you will. And uh, so we specialize in, in doing that as well. By, and, and, you know, using plants like this silphium, this uh, 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 compass plant that's behind us here, is that this is a plant that ordinarily you would not put in a front yard in a, in a cottage garden. And now we're doing that as long as we pay attention to scale. And scale meaning that having a tall plant right next to your sidewalk may not feel as comfortable. So we'll use this plant in the back of the border more. And here in, in coming into August, this is in, is in bloom. Uh, that tells you about the bloom time. Um, birds go crazy over the seed heads of this. Uh, it's a very good textural plant. That's something I always like to talk about is textures, okay? Is that if you look at this leaf, it's a very coarse texture. I may put this right next to a, a little blue stem or a big blue stem, uh, a native a warm season grass. And the be reason being is that the contrast of the textures uh, uh, of that plant. Here at Grow Wild, we are also a certified wildlife habitat. Back in the day, the National Wildlife Federation used to point it out as a backyard habitat. Every homeowner in America can apply for this. Uh, you, have, uh, you have to meet cer certain uh, criteria in the fact that you got to provide habitat, food. Uh, a lot of times that comes with uh, uh, coverage, you know, having the right plants in, in the right spot. Um, and they changed the name because that made people think that they can only do this in their backyard. We would like for it to go into the front yard and in your, 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 your yard. Uh, so yeah, we are a are certified wildlife habitat, and it makes sense if you ever come out to grow wild and see all the plants everywhere, we are definitely a, a habitat here. It's just part of what no, grow wild does. Talking about some of the native plants that are great for the homeowner, right? Uh, that's in bloom here in, in July. Uh, this is Retibita panata, the prairie coneflower we call it. Um, and it's a great yellow flower, uh, the goldfinch go crazy over the seed heads later on as they, uh, when the seed starts producing. But uh, the big thing about it is that you get this big, tall yellow now. One of the things I want to point out about this, and one of the reasons that we have a trial garden, is to show what plants do if we leave them alone, don't do anything to them, or whatever. And I want you to notice how the coneflower, this uh, prairie coneflower, 
has sprawled out, okay? So if this is a great plant for the back 40, all right? In other words, put it in a prairie, does great in a prairie where you've got a little competition. If you put it in your own yard, in a bed, make sure you got something around it that supports it. Um, and then we also, of course, have you, probably the most ubiquitous butterfly plant around is the uh, butterfly weed, that orange color that everybody knows about. Um, we'll trial these also to find out how shade tolerant they are because face it, you know, in typical suburbia, you don't have all full sun. It excels in full sun. We see it in exposed prairie areas. Uh, and of course it is the monarch butterfly host plant, one of them. Right. Coral honeysuckle. We know it's invaluable for the hummingbirds. Anything that has got that coral red color and has a long tube, you know that nectar's back in the base there. But typically we grow the Lonocerus and Bavirans up on a post. It's been called mailbox plant for a reason uh, because people would grow it up on a mailbox. But I like letting it sprawl. It becomes kind of what I call a subshrub. Uh, and of course it still blooms. Look at it. It's beautiful right now. So we've got it sprawling over a low growing uh, or a low uh, uh, cedar post fence and um, it's performed, been here for going on 20 years. So it's a long living uh, uh, plant for, uh, for hummingbirds. Butterflies go to it uh, and that's some of the crossover I think in a lot of these plants is that how many different insects go to some of these flowers. This is our native ironweed and it's about to come into bloom and of course, we know about this. You'll see it in the fields all around Middle Tennessee. Uh, and it's gonna have that, what I call the iron purple color to it. Um, and it's invaluable for the small pollinators, uh, the uh, bees. Um, and uh, the only problem with the, the tall ironweed, okay, this is uh, the Vernonia gigantea, is that it gets tall, okay? And sometimes in our own garden, it gets too tall. And you know, sure, butterflies may be up there, but we want to see it down here. And then sometimes, because it gets too tall, it also flops over. So I want to show you one that we're growing now that doesn't get as big and performs even better. And has a 45-day bloom time on it. How about that? This is one I'm really excited about. It grows a little bit further west from us, called the Great Ironweed, Vernonia arkansana. Uh, and as you can see, it's very good name to it. It's great how big and bushy this is, okay? And while I'm standing here and watching these bloom, there's all these little insects, little bees, little gnats inside the blooms of these. Well, what's great about that? Hummingbirds love this. They eat meat, okay? Uh, and they love to come this. So if you see a hummingbird coming through your ironweed, okay, what are they getting? Well, maybe it's not the nectar down in there like these little guys are doing, but they're eating those little gnats and those little bees in there. So, uh, but you'll see that what this does is that it stays bushy. It's a good, what I call the butterfly bush substitute, which is not native. And of course, we know a little bit about that now. We've learned a little bit about what buddleias do, but this is a good substitute for the butterfly bush. You know, I mentioned earlier that there are plants that we're growing from the deep south like we never could before, and this is one that has really just taken the area by storm. It's just a beautiful Salvia gregia, and this particular variety is called maraschino. Hummingbirds can't resist it, and anytime you see that kind of bloom with red and tubular like that, they go over it. Butterflies, pollinators, while I'm standing here, this plant is buzzing with the, with the pollinators. got the wild quinine in here as well. I like using these two plants together because culturally, in other words, what they like the, uh, the best uh, is hot, dry conditions. So, you know, no irrigation, no fertilizing, please. Uh, give it full sun, which most of us have. Uh, this is what, what it excels in. And then I got to mention this plant right here beside me because it's not just the hummingbirds and pollinators and and, and, and all the bees and butterflies, but also the birds. This is one of the best sources for migrating birds is the Virginia creeper uh, that we, of course, we look at all around, growing all around us. Great fall color, heavy in the protein and the fat and these berries.
now we're in a, a backyard. We're now at the nursery now. And so we're going to play a little bit more on design with, you know, the different colors, different heights, maybe even have uh, a little more um, uh, a, a seasonal color uh, in here. And I'll explain that. Uh, first thing I want to point out is the mountain mints. Mountain mints have been around for a long time. We're just now looking at what they can do in our garden. Mountain mints are aptly named. They are they typically grow out up in the hills, uh, all around here in Fairview. But the mountain mints have what they call a hoary leaf. So what you see is a silver leaf to it, and that's what we usually pick out. What we don't see as much is the tiny little flowers that's in the flower heads. This plant back here is literally humming with the insects right now. Butterflies will go to it, the pollinators will go to it, all bees go to it, uh, and it smells great. What you do want to notice though, back here in the back, is that it has spread. So make sure you put that in a garden where you can give it some room and enjoy it. It's tough, you don't need to put it under irrigation, plant it, leave it alone. One of the things I also want to point out along this pathway is all the use of some evergreen sedges we put in, okay? Sedges are the other not grass in, the, in Tennessee. Uh, typically, they're evergreen. They have persistent leaf to them. Some of them have some beautiful fall color, but persistent on through the, through the winter. So, and what you'll notice is that these sedges are low-growing, typically, okay? So they're kind of the monkey grass substitute that we've used for years. Uh, and they're a good filler. So when you're doing a cottage garden, a butterfly garden, you can have filler in that's not necessarily a blooming plant, but good for texture, low growing, okay? Good to fill in. Another plant I want to point out, you know, there must be a reason why they call this plant bee balm. Uh, bees go to it, hummingbirds go to it like crazy. Anytime you get a flower that is red and tubular like that, you know they're going to go, uh, go to that for food. Uh, so this is a Monarda, uh, one of the varieties of Monarda here, um, and typically called bee balm. Some people call it wild bergamot. Outstanding plant for our garden. It's hard to not talk about perennial plants and native plants in our garden without talking about the, the common coneflower. Coneflowers are work. You can go to any box store garden center and you're going to find some type of coneflower because they work. Butterflies are all over it. Hummingbirds go to it because they feed on the insects that's in these flowers. And then the bees are, of course, all over it, okay? Good cut flower, too, I want to add. Um, cut them, bring them inside. Uh, of course, our Tennessee coneflower, which is very different from this, uh, is a, uh, one of my favorite green root plants. Uh, and but the only thing about it is that instead of the cone shape like you see here, it's reflexed up, faces east, and does not turn with the sun. So you gotta be careful where you put it in your garden. You know, we talk about the heights and everything in here, and I want you to just kind of notice through here uh, of the lows and highs and everything, and textures. I've got coarse texture plants right next to fine texture plants, and that sets everything off. Hard to talk about hummingbird plants without talking about this guy right here, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna pick this bloom because we have a lot of these here. And this is the cardinal flower. I think that's a great name for this plant. Uh, look at that bright red flower, Lobelia cardinalis. There's also another one species that grows here called the big blue Lobelia, and that's uh, Lobelia syphilitica. Uh, but, I mean, you know, bright red in the landscape. Now, don't put this out in hot, full sun without some irrigation. You're going to need to put a little water to it when you plant it. All right, so in our, our trials of all the garden flocks, and garden flocks have been around for a long time, and people have been growing it forever and ever because, you know, it's a great cut flower. It has some fragrance. It blooms in the dead of the summer. Some people call it summer flocks for that reason. So we have we've found out about this one that was actually found in Bellevue in Nashville, Tennessee. A lady named Gina found this in her yard. She was living there by the Harpeth River. And she noticed of all the flocks that she was growing, the summer flocks, flocks paniculata, is that there was this one group of flocks that the butterflies went straight to, bypassed all the other flocks and went straight to this one, okay? And that's what this is. This is Phloxpaniculata gina, J-E-A-N-A. 
So this is a selection that is truly a homeboy, and the fact that it did come out of Nashville, Tennessee, we have noticed butterflies just all over it. Not just butterflies, the bees will be here, um, hummingbirds will be here, uh, but you're going to see a lot more butterflies, especially in the swallowtails. Well, that's all the time I have, and I appreciate you watching these videos. Um, if you're interested in any of the pollinator plants that I mentioned and for the hummingbirds, uh, at Grow Wild Incorporated, please give us a call. And then again, I really appreciate your support of the friends of the Warner Parks and the Nature Center. Thanks.